We will have today Marne, Noemi, and Nono from La Quadrature du Net. La Quadrature du Net has been working their asses off for your digital rights since 2008. They've been working and making essential contributions in France and the EU about digital rights. Today, they will present a sassy overview of the increasing oppressive and surveillance state from the country of human rights, especially its repercussions on activists. Thank you. Give it up. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Noemi. I am Mom. And I'm Nuno, so thank you everybody for coming. We'll present a year in review of France's best and beyond all the police states and stuff. So it's been a long, long year, and we're going to try to go over a few emblematic cases that happened this year. So let's start, shall we? So we decided to present you as a satirical tale with characters, and every story has his villains and his heroes. And what's good here is that they are both in the same time. So let's start with our competitors, and with the first one, uh, Gérald Darmanin, who is our little French hero, our, our little prodige, as we say. Uh, he's a minister of interior. And uh, he comes from the right party, but he betrayed them to join Emmanuel Macron. And now he's pushing for far-right ideas. And to give you a summary, well, he's a racist, he was accused of rape, he used to have some anti-Semitic penchant, and of course he loves to target Muslims whenever he can. So a beautiful, uh, beautiful character. Uh, he's a chief of the police, uh, French police uh, known for being very soft and kind during protests. And also, he he's always uh, cares about uh, the cops unions, which uh, in France, the um, cops union are very influenced, and he gets along with them very well. And as a second competitor, composed with uh, well-known big companies and small startups, uh, always uh, ready to win a new market, always happy to help government to uh, increase surveillance, uh, always uh, happy to uh, participate building the law uh, by crying because the law is uh, slowing innovation. Uh, the, it is the uh, French surveillance industry. We now have the Minister of Justice, Monsieur Eric Dupont Moretti, who, before becoming Minister of Justice, was a lawyer. And the first thing he did when he became Minister of Justice was to uh, put pressure on the judges he was confronted to when he was uh, a lawyer. <laughs> kind of weird. Um, he's also been in a corruption case uh, for, like, being, you know, corrupted as a Minister of Justice, which is kind of weird too, if you think about it. And he's been speaking loudly, saying sexist things. Very cool. Nice character overall. And our last competitor, um, the most secretive and sneaky ones, uh, the intelligence services, so DGSE and DGSE. Uh, since 2015 and a big intelligence bill that passed, they have very broad surveillance powers. Uh, so they are kind of favorite horse in this race. And uh, they are very used to do political surveillance, uh, especially since the Yellow Vest protest that happened um, a few years ago. Well, they got very crazy about it and now they cannot really let go of it. So all of them will fight. In eight rounds, uh, they will win and lose points, uh, all of this based in a total uh, arbitrary manner of counting and distributing points. Uh, so let's start. Mm -hmm. So everything starts in Paris in January 2023. Ah, Paris. <laughs> Capital of love, but also capital of sport, because as you surely know, we will host the Olympic, ga Oli Olympic Games in uh, 2024. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity for Darmanin to pass a new surveillance law. This is something we, usually, we, are, used to, we are used to see uh, in France. Uh, each time you have an exceptional event, you have an ex exceptional law. And here comes the French industry. 
They came with the speciality of the moment, AI-powered um, video surveillance, which is a um, software based on a computer vision algorithm, alg algorithms, um, which is aimed to uh, analyze uh, the images from the video surveillance uh, to find uh, what we call suspicious behavior. And what is interesting is this definition of suspicious behavior, because we have been studying this for four years at La Quadrature du Net, <clears throat> and we uh, have seen that this is used to detect things like people laying on the ground in the streets, or uh, people running, people uh, walking in the wrong uh, way, uh, in, in, the other, in the other way than the other people, and stuff like that. Even if um, the, 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 the things that the, that, uh, the industry and the, uh, the promoters of uh, this technology um, more talk, um, are more talking about, um, uh, detecting uh, abandoned parcels to fight against terrorism or to um, uh, the detect when there is a, a crowd movement. So uh, this definition of uh, suspicious uh, behavior is really interesting because it's in the street and it's more uh, surveillance on poor people than on others. Um, <clears throat> What uh, to to make it uh, accept uh, the, the 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 strategy of uh, Darmanin was to uh, use the opacity of the development of this technology because uh, nobody really knows it, and to use the fact that it is uh, officially an experiment, uh, an experimentation, and uh, so uh, it make us think that it will end. But uh, as we know at La Quadrature, when there is uh, a surveillance uh, experimentation, it never ends. So uh, for <coughs> this amazing uh, lobbying performance, we give 10 points to the uh, surveillance industry and, uh, to, and for uh, instrumentalizing such a large-scale uh, large, large event, we give a 5 points to Darmanin. <laughs> Um, meanwhile, in the French lands, in a beautiful city called uh, Dijon, there is this place called uh, Les Tanneries, which is actually a political and activist place uh, that exists since more than 20 years. So there are people living there. And one day, they were very curious about a little white box on an electric pole. An electrical pole, and they opened it. And what did they find out? Well, a Nexus camera that cost more several thousands of euros. And actually, they saw on Google Earth that it's been here, and Google Street Maps that it's been here for months, even years, uh, filming everybody going in and out of this place, which, as I just said, is somewhere where activists gather. And that's not it. On the same period, a few days before, uh, a guy called Julien Leguet, which is a leader of environmental movements, he found on the, uh, under his car a GPS tracer also. Um, and the same guy uh, found the year before uh, cameras uh, hidden in bushes uh, in front of his father's ho uh, house. So, we, in this round, the intelligence services make their entrance, but maybe with a little too much enthusiasm. So, we give them 10 points for the sneakiness, but they lose three points because they got caught. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's it for the second round. <laughs> So third round they, was the Battle of saint soline so it's a big climate protest against the mega basin that you can see uh, behind. It's basically a huge pool of water that pumps water from the ground and from around it, leaving everything very dry, except for the mega basin privately owned, so privatization of water. There were huge protests and it was a good occasion for the police to try out new techniques and new toys. So the new techniques were well, that's not very new. Police has been shooting people with tear gas and non-lethal weapons for a while now. 
but uh, they also had new techniques, like for example, a, a range of uh, quads, uh, police mounted two by two on a motorbike, and charging as a, as a line to the protesters. So there were two people in coma, a lot of people injured, blood, tears, etc. But there were also new toys. Uh, those little sh um, guns there that are paintball guns uh, contain little pellets that have DNA markers on them. So what happens is they see somebody in a crowd and they'll uh, aim, shoot, and it will mark you. You won't see it, uh, but under UV light, as you can see, it kind of glows. So the thing is that France is the only country in the world to use this technology, and other countries have actually explicitly told France that it has uh, social acceptance issues because, you know, like marking people with DNA is kind of weird to do, um, and it doesn't prove anything also. Like, you, you can't say that DNA has, like, there's no date and hour, it's not linked to other people, so you can't really prove anything. From what we heard, we're going to stop using it. So, 10 points for the innovation. Bravo. <laughs> Other poly, uh, police toys, um, well, um, uh, French police loves cameras. We have more than one million of them uh, in the country. And as you can see in this picture, they love them even more when they are flying. Uh, last April, a law authorized the use of drones by police. <clears throat> and uh, as in other uh, countries, they were mainly used to watch other demonstrations, but uh, we had several other uses, uh, which were more like excuses to uh, add more surveillance on a poor population. Uh, we had uh, uh, drones on border, like uh, for instance in the, on the border with Italy and with Spain and uh, on the English Channel. Uh, we had drones in the cities to uh, prevent from uh, motorbikes races, to prevent um, drugs and cigarette traffic. And uh, also every event we had, like uh, during the World Cup of uh, rugby, uh, we had drones uh, surrounding the stadiums or during uh, some concerts. So um, <clears throat> for spreading um, his new toys to the police, we give five points to Darmanin. And for the opportunity uh, for taking advantages of the situation, we give also three points to the industry. Um, so, during uh, all through the year, Darmanin, so for those who didn't follow, it's our dear Minister of Interior, he multiplied attacks on encryption. He doesn't really like encryption because it prevents him from so, for, uh, having access to conversation. Uh, so, uh, firstly, he said, um, he, he targeted activists, uh, saying that uh, they were using encrypted messaging app because of paranoia or because they have the culture of being clandestine, uh, doing this to uh, giving less uh, legitimacy on this. But then, what's interesting, it's a few months before, uh, after, sorry, um, there were a terrorist attacks in France, in the north of France, and Darmanin used this occasion to do another attack on encryption, but this time he expressly uh, required to undermine encryption and not new, he asked for a backdoor. We've heard this before. Um, but it's pretty funny how he asked for it. He used a very imaged uh, sentence. So as you can see on, the, on this quote, he said that traditional phone tapping, well, it was good, you can listen to every conversation. Now people, unfortunately, they're using encrypted apps. It would be so great if there were a backdoor and if you could say, hey, Mr. WhatsApp, hey, Mr. Telegram, I suspect that Mr. X may be about to do something, give me his conversation. Well, even uh, we don't know if he doesn't know how encryption works and that he doesn't know that Mr. WhatsApp and Mr. Telegram don't have ac actually access to the content because it's encrypted, or if he fakes this to just uh, keep on going on, um, on undermining encryption. Anyway, it was really stupid and really dumb, so for this he loses uh, five points. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. 
So now another climate protest. Um, so it was at the cement plant from Lafarge. So Lafarge is also known uh, for doing deals with ISIS, uh, supplying cement to them. So to shine a light on that and to also fight against the climate impact of cement, activists went to the cement plant and did tags, put uh, sand in diesel tanks, cut a few wires. So nobody was harmed. It was like a, a way of showing it and putting it in the press and the media. But it was also the occasion for the police to try every trick in the book. When I say every trick in the book, we're going to give a point for every trick that they used, and let's start the list. So, there was DNA analysis. Over two square kilometers, they found one cigarette butt and did a bit of DNA analysis on that. As I said before, DNA is not time sensitive, so you can't prove anything. Maybe a worker had a cigarette, threw it on the ground, bad for him, but whatever. There were fingerprints, CCTV tapes taken from the buses, the streets, the trains, etc., from a large uh, area around the cement plant. Facial recognition on those tapes, GSM location, malware injection, so they would send malware to the phones and computers of the suspects. Uh, they also got the call and SMS logs. They put EMSE catchers, which like uh, intercept messages from the phones and calls and stuff near the suspect's home. Uh, and they listened on phone calls. But they also <laughs> took the data from the banks, the trains, the bus companies, the social networks, internet traffic from the ISPs, so the connection logs, etc., etc., etc. And also the microphones in the homes and cars, GPS trackers on the cars. Pictures from the tolls on motorways to see who was riding with whom. Uh, a bit of OSINT analysis, so checking on the news, seeing what was happening and stuff. Uh, did home searches of the suspects and uh, exfiltrated data from the suspects' phones. So, how many? Well, 16 points for Mr. Dalmanon. Half of them to the surveillance community for maybe going a little bit over the top. Well, I mean, that's still a win. On the 27th of June, um, Nael, a teenager of um, 17 years old, was uh, shot uh, by the police. The day that followed, we had many riots in, the, in Paris suburbs and other cities, and it was time for Eric Dupont moretti to make his entrance. So what did he do? Has he taken interest in the social problems of the suburbs? Has he uh, under to undertake a huge plan to reduce police violence? Not at all. Uh, instead, he chose to appoint a lack of education of the, of the young um, protesting. Uh, he blamed the, parent and, uh, the parents, and also he blamed uh, the usual uh, scapegoat with uh, video games, the social network. Because those, um, those events were shared on uh, TikTok and Snapchat, for, for instance. The government uh, summoned the social network to ask them to censor the content um, spreading this event. Obviously, uh, the social networks obeyed, and uh, Snapchat, even whenever showing off that uh, on their platform there were only content uh, against those riots. So, um, for this great moment of censorship à la française, we give 15 points to Eric Dupont moretti <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it's the final and eighth round, and it's still with uh, Eric Dupont moretti So as you can see, he's um, he's trying to catch up uh, in this race, and for this, he brought out big guns. Uh, to give you some context, since 2016, the police in France, for not all of the crimes, but specific crimes, but not very serious, I mean, it's still quite a, a big scope. Uh, they can put microphone or cameras in private places and cars. Uh, so they can do this kind of surveillance. And for Eric Dupont moretti he said it was maybe a bit too dangerous to go and install those kind of tools. So he had a brilliant idea. Let's do it remotely. And how come we spywares? Uh, so they don't care if it like compromises security or maybe there is something called Pegasus that was a bit of a scandal. Um, the idea was to allow the police so to access remotely 
to um, the camera, the microphone, or the GPS um, of any electronic device, so meaning uh, your phone, your computer, uh, your smart car, or Google Home if you have one, uh, to have access to what everybody says if it's a microphone, or to the images of the camera of your phone or your, or your computer. Um, so it would be great to transform everything into police snitches. It's a really good move, really, really good idea. Uh, and it's also a new technology, so there is innovation. So we give 20 points for uh, Dupont Moretti. <laughs> but wait, wait. Uh, but wait. Wait, wait. What, what, what's coming? Oh, oh no, the Constitution. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about it. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, Conseil Constitutionnel, it's our, like our French constitutional court, it's not the best, best safeguard. He, it authorized a lot of surveillance law for the past years, but in November it woke up and said it might be a little intrusive. So, uh, said that this law was um, a breach of the Constitution. Actually, not all of it, uh, only the microphone and uh, the camera part, which is the worst, but still, uh, so, you know, G the police can activate GPS function remotely. Uh, so, Eric Dupont is a lawyer, he should have known all of this, so he loses 35 points and coming back to zero. Yeah, so, um, what's, so that's the end. What's yeah. the role? Who, what, what? who won? Gerald Darmanin, obviously. <laughs> Um, but actually, the story is not really over. Um, when we submitted the lecture, we wanted to make something funny, because humor is something that we use every day uh, to go through these difficult moments, these difficult fights. But something happened last week that we cannot really laugh about, uh, so we changed the end. Uh, uh, maybe so. I'm gonna. T um, maybe you've heard of it. It's what we call the 8 December case. It's a judicial case that happened uh, in France. I will sum it up like really briefly. It will deserve. It would deserve a whole conference about it. But we made articles about it. There is an English Wikipedia page. Uh, you can come talk with us after if you want. Um, so it's a story of seven people who were uh, old, coming with lefty or activist background, who were prosecuted for terrorist uh, association. Even if no uh, real concrete project was ever proven, was ever shown. Uh, in this case, that started three years ago, a lot of surveillance was made by the intelligence services and the police. So, it came from um, uh, wiretapping phone to bugging private place, and I say that because in the proceeding, in the, in the file, there is a lot of uh, statements, uh, sentences that were pronounced in private, used against them because it was about politics, it was about radicality, but it was about violence. It was used to show they, that, that they were violent. Uh, for example, if they talk about cops at 3 a.m., it can be used against them to show they were violent and they had terrorist intention. There are a lot of elements to convict them, not only this, but what's really interesting and what concerns here and what should concern you is that amongst these elements, uh, it's you, the, the fact that all of them used some encrypted tools, some privacy tools uh, to protect their privacy, like we all do here, I guess, it was used against them to show that they wanted to hide, that they wanted to be clandestine. Uh, here you have a quote of the public prosecutor in his brief that sum it up. He wanted to show that it was a dangerous group of people, as you can see, uh, being in the cult of secrecy, obsession, obsession with discretion, um, because they only use encrypted communication and uh, signal is particularly pointed out. But that's not all of it. Uh, actually, we, we had access to the file and we show elements all, all over it uh, about privacy, um, describing 
the youth, but also the person when they got arrested, they were, they were questioned about it. So again, it was a lot about encryption, be, uh, using encrypted apps such as Signal, but also WhatsApp, uh, wire, silence, also having encrypted emails with ProtonMail. Uh, the fact that they had internet privacy tools like VPN, Tor, the fact that they used, used tails, um, also that they were protecting themselves against exploitation of personal data. They got questioned, why are you skeptical with Google services, for example? Um, <laughs> Really, like, why did you install Signal to your mom? It's, it's, it's really, it's, you, you, we can laugh about it, but it's really, really, really scary. Uh, the fact that you use alternative or a uh, um, free operating system like EOS or Lineage, the fact that they encrypted their digital media or devices, the fact that, that they organized or participate, participated, sorry, to crypto parties to install tails, uh, the, and also uh, the fact that they only possessed uh, simple technical literacy documentation. So we followed the case. We went to the hearings that took, took place in October, and uh, the final decision was ruled last week on December 2022, and it's actually terrible. Um, the court followed exactly the fallacious reasoning of the public prosecutor. Uh, the judge said that even if there were no planned project, uh, they had terrorist intention, mostly uh, based on the private things they said on violence, on, um, on their uh, anarchist uh, ideas, the fact that they had books about it, uh, for example. Um, and amongst other elements, there are other elements, and not only this, but still, uh, they maintain the fact that if they use Signal, if they use special privacy tool, it means that they wanted to hide and they wanted to organize discreetly. So after this decision, we are actually afraid for the future and our friends tell us that for the first time <laughs> they are also afraid. Uh, this is a political judgment that threatens all activists. Uh, it's uh, also a very dangerous precedent for privacy. As it's, here it's not seen as a fundamental right, but as a suspicious behavior, it means that any form of, of confidentiality, well, it can become suspect by default. Yeah, so that was it, a year in your view. Thank you for joining us. We wanted to show you a bit like what was happening and stuff because of, well, the situation is pretty uh, frightening. France also has a lot of influence in the EU and we wanted to show it to the CCC because we know that a lot of people are working in EU politics or have an interest in it. So we'll need your help in the coming years and the coming days and stuff to put pressure on France and to stop France from influencing too much the other countries in the EU, being mindful of what was happening in France. Um, we will continue the fight and uh, we will need your support. You can support us at uh, this URL. And uh, I hope we'll see you all in the Olympics to enjoy all of the new tech. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think that that was not the last ruling in this case, I hope at least. Uh, do, you, do you see a way of, in the end, going to the European Court with this? Because this is so outrageous. I mean, the European Court is not going to abide by this. Uh, okay, sorry, can you just repeat the end? Do, do we see in the end what? Sorry, I didn't hear. What about the European Court? Yeah. Um, oh, 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 how long will it take until you wind up at the European Court? Um, actually, we already went a few times to the European Court of Justice. Uh, and it's actually one of our best allies now in France, as, as the French courts are uh, really increasing uh, or giving back bad decisions, etc. So, when we do litigation, we try to go to this court, but it cannot be an option for everything uh, because it's long. As you said, um, it, it takes, in general, three or four years to... It, it depends on the case, but it, it, it takes a long time to have a decision. 
And uh, for a lawful surveillance, it can help, but for political surveillance, like in the end, the European Court cannot do that much because we uh, there is a thing of uh, there is an ex exemption of national security also for every country. So we 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 did it. We uh, we don't have uh, for this eight or nine events. Uh, we don't know if we will go there, but it's true that now, when we come to the French in institution, we see a wall, and so the European Union is one of our best uh, allies. Mike Ford? Um, I wanted to ask if you think there's something special about France, or if this things can also, I mean, they probably also happen in Germany, in Switzerland and Italy. Or do you think um, France has like something special, like special way of politics or something that? Well, <laughs> thank, uh, thankfully and not thankfully, uh, France is not so special. There's been cases like this in other countries, but um, the, the international events happening in France also put a spotlight on it. So that's why we also wanted to show like the not so good part of France and kind of counter the propaganda of the French uh, government going on with this, and also like keep you posted on what's happening in France. I'm not sure that this kind of events are known internationally, so. Yeah, keeping everybody uh, in touch with what's happening in surveillance uh, settings like this is, I think, an important part. And, sorry, maybe to add just a bit, uh, for some of it, for example, the AI power surveillance, mm. we know that it's, there is really a French industry maybe coming from the ancient military industry that is really strong in France, so there is some explanation, but as Nuno said also, I think there is this general context in European Union of far right coming, of nobody cares of the institution. Uh, and maybe also we have this thing in France called Cinquième République, <laughs> which is like our fifth republic, and our institution are maybe at the mm. end of the race. I mean, they, they are not working, there is no, the safeguards are not working anymore. Uh, there is this big debate about renewing all the way we work, and you can see that the courts are not helping, that the politics can do whatever they want, so it might explain also why they can do all of this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the talk, and especially pointing out this yeah, very problematic uh, subject. Um, I, however, have some uh, issues with understanding both sides of the side. Like, uh, I do understand that we want uh, to, to keep our communication safe, that we don't want uh, surveillance if we do not have anything um, that has like, certain uh, uh, obvious reasons for surveillance. On the other side, I'm also kind of afraid uh, with uh, my physical uh, awareness. When I think of games like the Olympic Games, I see that there is a risk of terrorism acts on that hand, on the other hand, I do also see that I don't want the surveillance that you just pointed out. So what is your recommendation mm -hmm. to, combine, to combine both uh, sides of the card? I, uh, uh, I, yeah, I can answer on, on that one. There's been examples of uh, the police uh, using surveillance and, for example, facial recognition stuff, like in major sport events. Uh, um, there, there was this uh, football uh, game with Liverpool, I think, a few a few months back, something like that, and um, the police just didn't organize itself uh, physically well to prevent the terrorist attacks. One, one thing to keep in mind is like CCTV and uh, surveillance and stuff uh, is not as good as actually being like having a human presence, having a human intelligence going to check out people who would be problematic. Um, adding tech to a social or to a security problem doesn't always make it like uh, go away. The, the problem doesn't go away. So yeah, we, we've seen the Darmanin say, hey, if we had an AI, we, we could maybe have a better security and stuff, when in reality it was a way to cover up the shortcomings of the police, but not in a technical sense, just in the like, doctrinal sense of not letting people go through, making massive amounts of people wait at some point, uh, preventing people from moving, which are the main targets of like bombing and terrorist attacks. So you say the, the main issue is not the technical resource, uh, mm. but it's the human resource. It's the human resource and the political way of also doing security that has uh, been a big problem in France. 
for, for example, so nobody say that the Olympics is not going to be an exceptional event. It, it will, but we're saying that surveillance is not the solution. It's not efficient. Nono has said that there are other ways of preventing it. But for example, in Paris, I think the big issue will be public transport, for example. I mean, there are... The, the, there is this kind of manipulation saying that uh, technology will solve the problem, not addressing all of the problem and not proposing all of the solution. And this is something we saw, see a lot in France, that uh, security can only come from surveillance. And we try to show that it's not true, it's not efficient. And if it's not efficient, it's only dangerous and mass surveillance. And so we try to go out from the narrative that the public powers are imposing. Uh, the Olympic Games will be a mess, <laughs> but this is not the solution at all. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. I'd like to know all the data that you have collected on your eight challenge or on the eight short stories. Uh, were they all publicly available, or did you issue some requests to the public entities? Um, it depends on the subject. Uh, on the subject links to the uh, AI powered. Uh, uh, video surveillance. Uh, we have a lot of data which are uh, accessible uh, because we have a campaign uh, about this which is called uh, Technopolis. So you can find all those data on uh, data.technopolis.fr. Um, and uh, for the other subject, we have uh, several uh, uh, data on uh, uh, our website. Uh, so you can find them there. See. But you also can ask us if you want. Thank you very much. Like three. Like three. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, thank you for your talk. Um, when the activist uh, attacked the uh, cement factory, you mentioned in the aftermath that some activists were targeted with uh, for forensic software, so remote forensics, so uh, malware was uh, placed on their phones or laptops. Can you be more specific about that? Um, so if, I, if I understand the question, it's for, for the Lafarge uh, plant, yeah. yeah. Actually, um, if I remember well, uh, so they tried, the police tried to put some uh, malware, malware or kilogirls on five smartphones, and they only succeeded in one. Uh, that's the, the, the information we have, but all of this is mm -hmm. not really, uh, it's not really accessible. And we believe that the only one they succeeded, we, well, we don't know if they did it remotely or if they went to this guy's place and introduced. And that's something that maybe might go public, but the, so it's uh, all those persons were arrested in June, so it's really recent. Mm -hmm. uh, the proceeding documents are not public, so this is some information we got that, mm -hmm. that is in French, but uh, that's all we know for now. From from what we know, they were uh, uh, garde à vue uh, interrogations, custody. yeah, custody. That they were held in custody, and their phones were uh, inspected by the police at that time. And we believe it's possible that at that moment the phone were compromised uh, by the police. And there's also this law that. Uh, we, we talked about that um, enabled to put spyware and even if you just activate the GPS uh, um, module, you still need to have an access to the phone remotely or physically. And maybe a follow up, has the malware win has been uh, analyzed from some of you or do you know which malware was used? No. No, we, we don't have... Uh, we we might know in... In the next few months, years, but it's still it's still ongoing procedure, so difficult to have access. There is a secret of. Okay, one last question from Mike Three. Hi, um, as if I understood correctly, you mentioned that there is a relatively big AI industry or surveillance AI-powered surveillance industry in France. What do you know about how France works internationally with other countries, maybe even extremely re repressive states? Ah. <laughs> Once ago. <laughs> Here's your <mouth> <laughs> um, I can say, well, we know that so France is pushing uh, at the European U Union level for uh, large, uh, for, le le um, I mean, broad legis le legislation, so that's the legal part of it. We know that they're selling also 
their mm -hmm. uh, softwares uh, yeah. to... A lot of countries, yeah. uh, Qatar also uh, Qatar, buy, yeah. buys uh, stuff from France. There's this big uh, convention called Midipol in <laughs> France that happens in Paris a, a few times. And uh, it's the occasion for all the, the industries. We were seeing Thales, for example, which is very well known. Uh, Amesis, there's all those startups that have a lot of like selling and uh, front view on the rest of the world during this convention. So if you check out, like for example, Thales or uh, Milipol, there's this great website called Reflet, uh, Reflex.info, which has a great documentation on everything that's been going on during, like in this uh, area. Thank you. That was it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.